In this tutorial, I want to show you an app for iPad that makes it possible for you to create your own iPad games, interactive activities, and other apps. And these apps that you make, if you're willing to pay, they can be put into the Apple iOS store, the App Store. So let's take a look at this app. It's this one here called HyperPad. Now, there are some similar apps out there. For example, Ready Maker. This one is also fairly similar. And then there's another app that does a few things kind of like HyperPad and Ready Maker. It's called Tiny Tap, and I like it even better in some ways, but in other ways it's lacking a little bit some of the power of HyperPad. I've done a tutorial on Tiny Tap, and if you're interested in learning about it, it really is an amazing tool. It's much easier than HyperPad, but a little bit less powerful. So check out my tutorial if you'd like to learn more about Tiny Tap. But for now, let's jump into HyperPad. So I just tapped on HyperPad, I'm going to open it up, and it takes me to my projects screen, and it shows three projects that I've been working on. Let's create a new project. I'm going to tap in the upper right where it says new project, and let's give this a name. I'm going to call this Spaceman Adventure. So I just type that in as the name of this project. Now I have set up a HyperPad account, just a free account with them, and so I'm doing automatic cloud backups. It's saving my progress to the cloud on their website. If you want to turn that off, you can, but then your entire project is only being saved to your iPad, and it's possible that you could lose your work. I'm going to tap Next, and at this point, I need to decide what the orientation of my game is going to be. Whether on an iPhone or an iPad, how do I want the game to be played, vertically or horizontally? And the game that I'm going to make with you is a side-scroller game, kind of like Mario Brothers or Super Mario Brothers, and there's so many other examples of side-scroller games. But because of that, I think it should be horizontal. The iPad should be, or the iPhone, or whatever it's going to be played on. Next, I need to choose the devices that I want this game to be playable on. Do I want it to be only available for iPad, or would I like iPhones to be able to play it also, and even on a Mac? So in this case, I'm going to choose iPad and iPhone. Now, if you choose more than just one option, what's going to happen is your project files are going to be a little bit bigger, right? So they'll take up more space on your iPad as you're building the project. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to tap Next in the lower right corner. And at this point, I need to choose a view. Do I want my project to be in bird's eye view, as if I were a bird up in the sky looking straight down at the ground, okay, or looking down at my project from the sky? Or do I want a side view? Well, for a side scroller game, I would pick a side view. Makes sense. At this point, I need to set up some rules for my game. And the first rule that I need to consider is gravity. Do I want my world to have some gravity in it that pulls the character down? If I do, then I would leave this where it says minus 25. Now I can change this if I want a little more gravity to pull the character down to, toward the ground a little more harshly, I guess. I could make that minus 30, okay, or minus 50 even. You get to determine the world of your game or your app and how much the gravity is. Now there's also another box for gravity. And if I understand correctly what this would be, this is gravity in the X coordinate. Okay, so horizontal gravity, which in my side scroller doesn't make sense, but it may in something that you create. For me, vertical gravity is what's important in my game. Okay, the PTM ratio. I believe that stands for pixels to meters ratio. And I don't fully understand that, but it, I'm sure that it has something to do with, you know, how many pixels will be on the screen as I play the game. And uh, it probably has to do with pixelization and making sure that the images look good. The default is 32. I'm just going to leave it at 32. I'll tap Create. And it's creating a project space for me now. And it loads a scene, a completely blank scene, that I can use in my game. Now, I should emphasize that it doesn't have to be a game. I could create really any kind of app that I can dream up and that I could program using HyperPad. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to start to get some visual elements into this app, right? I mean, it's important to have that. And of course, I should do a storyboard and plan it out and all of that. But in trying to keep this tutorial as short as possible, I'm just going to go down to the lower right corner and I'm going to tap on this drawer. You tap on that and it brings up 
some options that you have for creating or importing or finding visual elements that you want to bring in to your app or game. Now here it gives us a folder and it says UI. If I tap on that it'll open up with some user interface visual elements, right? I've got a button, I've got some fonts that I can use, a health bar folder with a couple of health bars, joystick, and lives indicator. And so these are user interface images that I can use and they're pretty common in games and so they just provide that to every game. But other than that I, I've got nothing here, right? I would have to either go here and create things or import things and as someone that uh, you know I, I wish I were an artist and I have got a little bit of ability with that I'm not a great artist and this would be intimidating for me to just create everything myself uh, for my game well fortunately they've got this shopping cart you can tap get assets and as far as I can tell the assets that it brings up here are free now probably in the future they'll come up with some more assets that they charge for but as of right now I haven't found any that charge that cost okay so we're gonna to want to get some of these assets and put them on our iPads and so here in the upper left corner where it says digital sound effects I want that so I just tap on it digital sound effects a get button appears and I can just tap get and it's now downloading those assets and it's putting them and saving them in the projects download folder so I tap OK now I can tap close and now I have some digital effects now if I tap back here on this back button it takes me back and now I've got downloads and I've got user interface so a new folder has been created for me which is nice and any downloads that I get from this get assets button will be put into that downloads folder now the first time that I did this that I started downloading from Hyperpad some featured assets it didn't work so well so let me tell you what happened and how I worked around it and made it work so in addition to sound effects which are going to be very handy I'm gonna need some images and so here in the lower right there's a platformer starter pack and I'm gonna tap on that and get that as well by tapping get it's downloading those assets so the first time that I tried doing this with my first project this kept failing okay so it would just say failed and I would just tap OK and then immediately try it again and it worked the second time and it happened that way for every starter pack that I downloaded in my first project but ever since then I haven't had that problem so it's kind of strange uh, but I want you to know if it does fail for you just immediately try it again and in my experience that solves the problem alright back in get assets I could go and get even more there's platform player pack and there are platformer enemies and all sorts of interesting assets that you can use in your games so I'm just gonna close for now that should be enough for the game that I'm gonna build so now I'm gonna go into downloads I'll tap there and I'll tap platformer starter kit and I'm gonna go in and get a background for my game so I can just tap on backgrounds it opens up with three basic backgrounds now if that's limiting to you and you'd rather import your own you can do that you can just tap here on import you can import from your camera roll from Dropbox and there are some other options but for a background you would probably have to go with camera roll or Dropbox alright so I'm gonna tap outside the box here to get back and I'm gonna go with the blue grass option so I tapped on it and I held and it popped up with an asset menu so in hyperpad if you tap and hold on something it often gives you a menu kind of like a right click if you're used to right clicking with a mouse on a PC or a Mac computer when you right click you get a pop-up like this with a lot of options a menu of options and that's what happens in hyperpad when you press and hold for a few seconds I could preview what that looks like and there's some other things that I can do as well but I'm just gonna tap on it and it puts it down here in a storage area let's call it at the bottom of the screen and this just shows recent assets recent images and things that I have selected they're not part of my game yet but they're recent ones that I've selected and so I can now tap and hold and drag that onto the screen as my background now of course that doesn't really fill the screen it doesn't look much like a background it's just something sitting there in the game and so that 
even though it's a way to get a background onto the screen and it's a way to get other objects onto the screen and I wanted you to see that, that's actually not the best way to make a real background. So I'm going to tap on that image and now that it's in my game, the way to delete it, yes I could click and hold and I get a pop-up, but the best way to delete it once it's part of your game is to tap on it. This panel opens on the right side with some options and there's a button to delete. So I'll tap the delete and let's look at the proper way to add a background into your Hyperpad games or apps. And that is here in the upper left corner. You tap on this symbol for images. That's what that represents. So I'm tapping on that and I get a couple of options here. I'm gonna go down and select background and then tap to change background. So I tap there and now I go into the assets that I downloaded into the backgrounds folder and I'm gonna choose the right background. Now it still doesn't fill the screen. But notice, there's some options for how I treat this background. I can stretch it, I could tile it. Okay, so stretch would just stretch it out so that it fills more of the screen. Tiled would just repeat it, so that it would be repeated to the left, to the right, above, so that it kind of fills the screen. Right now I have it set as centered. You can also do aspect fit and aspect fill. And I'm just gonna go with aspect fill. But you can see the different options and ooh, I kind of like tiled actually. That's not a bad look. So you can decide what to choose, but I think I'll go with tiled. I like that a little bit better, I think. So now to make this effective and to get back into my project, all I have to do is tap outside this box. So I do, and there's my game so far uh, with a nice background now. Okay, now because it's a background, if I tap and drag, notice that it doesn't really move the background. Okay, you've got this outline in like light green. Okay, that represents the screen of the iPad or the iPhone that the player is going to play the game on, right? And so I'm not really moving that background. The background image is stuck inside of the frame, and that's a good thing because as I build the game, I don't want the background shifting around and moving around. Okay, next I'm going to go back to the drawer here in the lower right corner and I'm going to tap the back button to get out of the backgrounds and I'm going to look for the player one character. And this is just going to be a one player game anyway, but here we have the green spaceman and I'm just going to tap on him and choose to have him be the player one character. Now for this, you have to decide what is going to be the default animation for your player one character. And I recommend that you choose the standing animation as the default view for your character. So I'm going to tap on stand and it puts the green alien down here in the dock or whatever you want to call it of recently selected items. And I can tap and hold on him and drag him onto the screen. And now I've got a character, a main character on the screen. Now at this point, you can make some decisions. For example, how big do you want this character to be? Right now he looks kind of small in that world and that might be just what you want. But if not, you can tap on the character and use the corner, just the corner handle here, or you could use one of these others to drag to make the character bigger or smaller if you'd like. You can also use this symbol here, tap and hold and drag to rotate your character and I didn't really want to do that. We do have an undo button here and a redo button here, so I can undo that and get back to how I wanted the character to be. These buttons will come in handy, definitely. Now next up, I need something for the character to walk on or to land on, and so I'm gonna go back to the drawer down here in the lower right corner, hit the back arrow, and notice that there's two more folders that I haven't explored yet, Grass World, and that's what I was looking for. And then there's also some world objects that I could use, but this is exactly what I was hoping for. I just want the grass ground middle, and I would like, how about grass ground end? And I could use more than that, but for my purposes, that's probably gonna be plenty. So I'm gonna tap up here on this bar to get back out of the drawer and back into my app or game. So now I can just tap and hold and drag one of each of these onto the screen. All right, and this provides the platform for the green alien for player one's character to be able to walk on. All right, let's try this out. I'm gonna put these on the screen and at any time in your Hyperpad projects, you can test it out by just tapping this button here at the top, the play button. And so this is one of the best things about Hyperpad and also other apps similar to it. You can test them immediately. There's no like debugging or compiling and things like that that need to be done before you test the game. So I'm just gonna tap up there on play and it opens up 
and there's my player and there's the ground but notice he's not even touching the ground he's not he's just floating in the air also what do i do i'm tapping the screen nothing happens uh there's no interaction here this is not a game it's more like a drawing or a scene that i'm making but with no interaction so i'm going to tap here in the upper left corner and you can see that it gives you some options like you can restart resume you can show the frames per second the aspect ratio and stuff like that but i'm just going to quit so i tap quit and it gets me back in i need to do something to make this work so i need to do a little bit of programming i guess we could say or coding and to do that, I'm just going to tap on the alien here. It opens up the panel. And the first thing I need to do is change some characteristics of this green spaceman. Right now, notice that he is set up to be similar to a brick wall, I guess, is what that's saying. Well, let's talk about that. So we have three options here. We have three options for this character. I could make the character be similar to a rocket ship. What that means is like an active object an object that maybe is controlled by the player or maybe by the computer, things like that, but an active object in this world. And that's really what I want for this player one character, right? I want player one to be able to control him. The next option is, is like a world object or a wall object. I think that would be appropriate for these things here. Let's see if that's the case. Yes, it is. They're set up automatically to be wall objects. But our main character here was also defaulted to being a wall object, and that's not what we want. So I'm going to change him back to the active object. Another name for that is physics object, and that's what Hyperpad calls it. But I think of it as an active object, uh, but I should use the right term, physics object. The third option is a background, or a scenery object is what they call it. Well, in this case, I definitely want the physics active object, and so I switched it back to that. Okay, next up, I need to determine, do I want my character to be passable? And that would mean that things can pass through him. And no, I don't. I, I don't want him to be a ghost, basically. So I'm not going to make him passable. There's some other things that you could work on, like what's the friction of the character, the mass of the character. So you can set some characters to have a very high mass. And, you know, gravity is going to, you know, interact with that a little differently or a lot differently. And you can have other characters have a lower mass, whatever you want to do with that. But for now, I'm happy with the defaults. So next up, I'm going to go into the behaviors. And this, for me, is where it's really exciting to use HyperPad. This is very much like programming. I've done some programming in BASIC, Visual BASIC, in uh, Microsoft C++, and uh, you know other similar programs. And I know how challenging that can be and how hard it can be. I've had some success with it, but it can get really complicated really fast. But in here, in HyperPad, it's a lot easier to understand and to organize, I think, your coding for your games and apps. Okay, now you'll notice that I've got a little box here that says Play Animation, and it shows my player one. So that was created by default when I chose which animation I wanted for this character. And this is just the standing animation. So at the beginning of the game, my player one character just stands there because that was the play animation that was created by default. All right. The most important thing right now, though, I think, is to put in some controls for the character. So I'm going to go here to the upper left, and I want to show you that there are some options here for interaction. So controlling and interacting with the character. There are object options, attributes, etc. There are screen options, transform options, user interface. There's the play button that I can use to test what I'm doing. There's effects. So for example, I could have a different animation play. There are some scene options, physics options, logic, and custom. There's also help, which is very helpful, just so you know. Uh, the help is helpful. So you've got a manual, you've got a forum, and some samples and things like that that really will come in handy. But I'm going to close out of that to get back to my game. And I want to control this character. It seems like interaction would be the logical place to go to get some controls. So I tap on that, and these controls appear. The one I'm looking for is this one, joystick control. So I tap and hold and drag that onto the screen. And now when I tap play... It loads my game, and look, my character is now controlled by this joystick uh, that they put into the game. And I automatically put it in because I said it was joystick controlled. Now, as you can see, there's some real problems with my game so far, but at least it's playable and testable, and 
just to be able to do that using Visual Basic or C++ or, you know, a full programming language would take much more work than what I just showed you and would be, you know, very extensive and complicated in most cases. And so it's exciting to me that we're able to do what I just did in such a quick, painless way. Okay, I need to jump back to my scene here in the upper left because we need to make some changes to what's going on here. Okay, one of the changes that we need is we need more space for the character to walk on. Right now he's just got these two plots of ground to walk on. That's not enough. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I would like to start with this one that's kind of rounded. And I want a rounded one on, on the left and one on the right of this scene. And so to do that, I'm going to copy this rounded plot of ground. And I do that here. I just tap that symbol and it creates a copy and then I would like to flip that one horizontally so that the rounded part is on the left. To do that I select it and then I'm going to go here and tap on that symbol and that lets me change the dimensions of the object but it also lets me flip it on the x-axis. Okay so you can see now there's a copy and it's been flipped. So I'm going to click and drag and put that to the left side right up against the wall and I'm having a little difficulty getting it up against the wall perfectly so I'm gonna turn on this grid there's a grid there at the left and it's a snap to grid okay in other words it lets me go right up to the point where I would like it to be and then I also decided just to make that plot of ground a little bigger so now I've got that endpoint and I can tap on this one on the right make it a little bigger and put it on the right side and then this other plot of ground that's more squarish. I'm going to make it bigger and I might need to change some of this a little bit later. And I want to put it just to the right of the other plot of ground. But in order to really do that, I'm going to have to turn off that snap to grid because it just wasn't working out. So there I've got it just to the right, overlapping it maybe just a little bit. But that looks pretty good, I think, as a place for the plot of ground to go. Now one thing to notice, I'm sure some of you are noticing that the joystick is covering up these plots of ground that I'm putting in and it's making it a little difficult to make sure I'm doing it right. So let's look over here on the right side at the layers that we're dealing with. If you don't have a character selected or an object selected, in many cases the default options here at the right in this panel will be the layers. Okay, And by default there are three layers in your app or game. This is the main layer that I've been putting the characters on and the objects and things like that. But if I tap on Scene UI, Scene User Interface, that's a different layer. Okay, so I can put other things on that layer and they won't interact with each other because they're on different layers. I can also go up to Global User Interface and look, now I can move that joystick. Now it was really in the place I wanted it to actually be, but it does help me to kind of get it out of the way temporarily. So I'm going to put it up there and I'm going to tap on that second plot of ground that's down here. But look, I tap on it, nothing happens. Why? Because it's on a different layer. So that's going to happen to you many times as you build your game. You're going to forget to switch from layer to layer. That's okay. But I switched back to main. Now I can tap on the plot of ground and I would like to make a bunch of these all the way across the scene. I could drag them one at a time and do this in a really tedious way. But instead of that, I'm just going to tap on it and then go here and tap on this button here that creates a clone or a duplicate of what I already have. So I'm going to tap on that and I can just tap quickly. I can tap, you know, six, seven, eight times and quickly have a nice ground for my character to walk on. I put probably too many on there, but that's okay. So now I've got a pretty nice platform for my character to walk on and to be able to explore. Okay, so I'm going to tap play at the top of the screen and let's check this out. Oh, I forgot to put the joystick at the bottom of the screen, but that's pretty good so far. I do need to fix this. It looks like it's not quite lined up perfectly. So there's a couple of things to work on, but my game is coming along quite well at this point. The other thing I'd like to work on is look at my character. He's just kind of skating along. I'd like to make him walk, and so let's work on those three things quickly. I'm going to go back up here, tap, I'll quit, and then back in the scene I can adjust that plot of ground and make it look a little better. I can also put this joystick back down in the lower left corner. To do that, of course, I would have to go to the global user interface, drag that back down in the lower left corner where it's much easier to reach for the player. And then the third thing we need to do is make this character so that he doesn't just skate along, he can actually walk. To do that, I tap on the character, and of course, it's not doing it. Why? Because I have to tap back here on main 
Now I'll be able to select the character and then I go to the behaviors of the character and I would like to say if the player is using the joystick pushing to the left or the right then I want the animation to change and be the walking animation. So that sounds like something to do with interaction but look I don't see joystick left joystick right in this list of controls or touching. The reason why is because we're looking just at the basic controls, but there's also advanced controls. Um, Hyperpad doesn't want to overwhelm you with all the options all at once, and so that's why there's basic and advanced. But it also can hide some really important features, so just be aware of that. If you don't see what you're looking for, try advanced. So here's joystick left. I'll tap on that and drag it onto the screen there. And then joystick right. I'm going to put both of them there so that either a joystick left or a joystick right would do the following. Okay, and that is to change the animation. To change the animation, I'm going to go here to effects. And when I tap on effects, look, I get some nice options. One of them is to play an animation. I'll tap and drag that onto the screen. And I'm going to put it below these other two blocks that I already put on the screen. The reason why is because I need to connect these up. This is kind of like doing an if-then statement in BASIC or in other programming languages. So if the joystick is pushed to the left or the joystick is pushed to the right, then play a specific animation. I need to connect these together. And the way you do that is by tapping and holding on that circle and then dragging a line to what you want to connect it to. So isn't that cool? I love how that works. Next, joystick right. I need to connect that up too. Now, I need to make sure that it's set up to play the correct animation. Okay, so I'm going to tap on the symbol there of our main character, and then I'm going to select the animation that I want to play if the joystick is pressed to the left or to the right. So I'll tap there in that space. It lets me have access to the drawer. So I'll tap on the drawer. I'll tap back, and now I can tap on the green spaceman again and select a different animation. And look, there's walk animation. So I tap on it and it gives me here a preview of that animation. Now, because of how I'm mirroring my iPad, it doesn't look like it's animating much at all. But on my iPad, his legs are moving r super rapidly, like way too rapidly. So he's going it's going way too fast. And again, you're not seeing that because of how I'm mirroring my iPad. The reason it's going to, so fast is because of this. Frames per second, 60 frames per second is how fast his legs are moving. And I think that's too fast. So I'm going to click here on this X and I'm going to change that to 5. 5 frames per second. That's going to make it a lot easier for the player to see his legs moving. So I'm going to tap here on enter and now you're able to see it too uh, because it's not going super fast. All right, let's try this out. I'm going to click on this play button at the top of the screen and let's watch what we have so far. Okay, my character has gravity so he falls to the ground but he doesn't pass through it. I can use the joystick to make him move and he in theory anyway, will walk when I move the joystick to the left and when I move the joystick to the right. Now every once in a while the animation doesn't quite happen correctly and I'm not exactly sure why, but still that's pretty good. That's a good start for our game. Okay, we're doing really well so far, but I want to quit out of there and I'm just going to add one more element of this game in this first tutorial and that is jump with button. So I tap and hold on jump with button, drag it onto the screen. Now when I tap play, there is a button that goes with my joystick and I can tap it to make my character jump. So this is awesome, right? <laughs> this is just a, an amazing game so far. No, not, not so amazing, but still really fun. And for the amount of time and effort I've put into this, I think it looks great. And it's pretty exciting that you can do this much with a free app and that it actually is possible when you're finished with your game to compile this or whatever the official word is for an app and package it so that you can put it in the app store and if you want you can charge for it and, and make some money so I'm gonna go here in the upper left corner and I'm going to quit this tutorial is is the first tutorial in a series that will walk you through how to create a complete game of maybe three or four levels I know that's not a lot of levels in a game but I, I wanna walk you through the steps of how to do that and this is part one and I want to come back and work on this in the future and so it's important that I save it and I want you to know how to do that so here in the upper left corner I can tap on those lines there and notice at the bottom it says save and quit and so I'm gonna do that it gives me a little hint and I could click through to learn more about that but I'm gonna X out of it at this time and just go down to save and quit are you sure you want to quit 
Yes, I'm sure. It saves the level. And so in the future, I can go back here and tap the edit button to get back into it. If I want to upload it to the cloud, I can do that. I can also play it, test it out. If I'm ready to get rid of it, I can just tap there and choose delete. But you can see there's also some other options for how to share this project or send it to other people and things like that. And notice right here, export for the App Store. Now, like I mentioned, that's an advanced feature. You would have to pay to be able to do that. And there are some limitations with this free version of HyperPad. You're limited, I believe, to 100 of the behaviors. So here on uh, behaviors, I've used, I don't know exactly how many this would count as. Would that count as six or would it count as four? I'm not totally certain. But uh, I've used up some of my 100 because I just have the free account. But it's a great way to teach and learn about how to code and how to create things that could go into the App Store and become apps. So I just love HyperPad. I think it's got great potential. So please watch for my future tutorials on HyperPad. And please connect with me on my social media websites like Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.